Three-year-old Philly Trotters behind the gate. Matron final purse, $203,850. They're off from the inside. New York Starlet leaves. There goes Scully FBI far outside. True Diva into the turn. Scully FBI. True Diva made a break. New York Starlet is there. Siring Sanover gets away in third. With the rail, Noble Message trots in fourth. Apple Cider Hanover is next on the outside. Blues Chip, followed by S.J. Countessa, still off stride, True Diva. They go to the quarter. New York Starlet's got the lead. Sitting with that early lead now, that Scully FBI. As they come by the stand, sitting in second is New York Starlet, 28 flat. But here comes Cyrinx Hanover up on the outside to get the lead, and Cyrinx Hanover goes right by. Scully FBI is now back to second. New York Starlet is third, followed by Noble Message in fourth. As Jake Countessa races on the outside. Then it's Apple Cider Hanover. Blues Chip is next, way back. True Diva as they go by the half. It's Cyrinx Hanover on top. In 58 and two fifths, they continue around the turn toward the back stretch. Siring Sanover two lanes. Scully FBI. Here's New York Starlet to the outside in front of S.J. Countessa. Noble Message is back to fifth along the rail. As they move up the back stretch, Blues Chip is on the outside making a break, moving through at the rail. Apple Cider Hanover. They go toward the end of the back stretch now, and Siring Hanover is moving away. Three quarters now in 127 and 2. Siring Hanover, three lanes. New York Starlet is on the outside into second. Dropping back a bit. Scully FBI, three wide. SJ Countessa, followed by Apple Cider Hanover. They come toward the top of the stretch. And Siring Hanover is out by five lanes, coming off the turn. Siring Hanover. SJ Countessa, out in the center of the track, into second. They come through the stretch. Siring Hanover wins in hand. Siring Hanover in front. Very close for the place. Might have been S.J. Countessa over Apple Cider Hanover, 156 and 1. Hanover, three year old Bay Philly by Lindy Lane, owned by the Need to Know Stables. Trained by Chris Marino, driven a victory by John Campbell, 156 and 1 fifth. In the winner's circle, making a blanket presentation. Manager of Harness Racing here at Dover Downs, John Hensley, along with Publicity Director Mark Bachrod. In the winner's circle with John Campbell, who has had the distinct pleasure of driving uh, the outstanding three-year-old trotting filly of the year, Cyring Hanover. John, I guess it's kind of pleasure, isn't it? Yeah, it sir, is a privilege to drive one like her. She's just uh, been a phenomenal winner throughout her career. Tell me a little bit about uh, the way you, uh, you got Cyring to drive and, and what you thought of her at first and how she has come along. Well, my first impressions were last year I was racing Spellbound. Hanover against her last year and couldn't beat her. She, she was, she, she was, was yeah, she was very impressive in the uh, Breeders' Crown and the uh, Goldsmith Maid at, uh, in New Jersey. So, um, and then uh, Chris approached me about qualifying her and uh, making a commitment to her once she started racing. And uh, you know, once I qualified her, once I was pretty sure that I she'd be a nice mare to race the rest of the year. You've raced a lot of uh, top-notch female trotters. Uh, what makes her what she is? She's undefeated, and that's very difficult to do in this day and age. And it just shows you what a great filly she is. It's very difficult difficult to compare horses from year to year. But when a horse goes undefeated at the level that she's racing at, it, I think it's just phenomenal. I think one of the most phenomenal performances was when she won the Hamiltonian Oaks, when you had the pleasure of driving her and locking in the rest of the field, getting home, and that kept the win streak going. Yeah, we were lucky that day. She wasn't at her best, but that just shows how much uh, class and grit she's had. She wasn't anywhere near being 100%, and uh, Chris did the right thing after the Hamiltonian Oaks and, and gave her the time off, and she's just bounced back, and, you know, she's right at the top of her game right now, as good as she's been all year. And you're certainly at the top of your game, uh, working on 14 million to be the first harness driver ever to reach that level, and uh, two, uh, 300 million dollar man, uh, continued success and good work to John Campbell. Thanks very much, Mar. Appreciate that. All righty. Let's see. Chris Marino, let's get over here and say a couple words. Uh, the smiling trainer for Cyrings Hanover. Uh, you were pretty much of a pacing man for a while. Now you're a trotter. Well, I guess she made me a trotting man. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, what about Cyrinx? How how is she? Is she? I see she's a little bit of a, a kicker over there. I guess she's uh, an excitable type of a mare. Yeah, she's a professional. When she comes to the track, she's here to work. How about around the barn and getting her ready to race? Uh, does she do it all the time? Is she good in training as well as uh, she is on the racetrack? Yeah, she feels good all the time, and uh, she's a good trainer. And uh, she basically just does it all. And how about uh, this for Cyrinx? Anything else for the 2001 season? No, that's it for her now. She'll get uh, a rest for a while, and we'll bring her back in the spring. Were there any... Uh, points during the year where you're a little apprehensive about her or about that win streak? Um, yeah, after she'd won five or six in a row, then I started to get a little nervous. And in the Oaks, you know, the heat really got to her. And uh, I just want to thank the girl, Sarah Scott, who takes care of her. She did a great job with her all year. Well, thank you very much, Chris. Chris Marino, the trainer. And now Anthony Pecorero is a guy who went to the Harrisburg sales about uh, three years ago and uh, saw this trotting Philly, took a liking to her, didn't have a trainer near, but decided he would bid on her. For $8,500, you did the job. Yeah, she did. She did more than her job. That's she's, for sure. She's an incredible horse. Now, uh, you've been a fan of the sport of harness racing, and uh, as an owner right now, you're right at the highest level. Uh, it must uh, be a great feeling. Oh, it's very exciting. Every time she hits the track, you know, she treats us uh, beautifully. The horse is, you've seen it. She's just an incredible horse. What about uh, Cyrinx? When did you know she was extra special? Uh, that's pretty tough. I, I would say when she first hit the track, when she first started to train, they started to break her, we knew we had something there. I mean, nobody ever knows what they're going to have until she races. But like I said, you could see how special she is. How about her plans from here on out? Right now, she's going to take a nice, well-deserved rest. Uh, we're going to sit down, me and Chris. We'll look at the stake schedule, see what comes our way, and we'll make a determination probably around January.